Okay, so what we're doing now, we're going to hydrolyze the um, E. coli. So we have this transformation solution here, which is calcium chloride. And then we have a disposable pipette. So you have to pay close attention to what each of the lines means on the pipette. Um, sometimes you'll use a fancy micro pipetter. And then this is the E. coli. And this E. coli is actually, you can see there's a powder in the bottom, so it's actually stored dry. And then it's shipped to us, and then it doesn't start to divide again until, it, until water is added to it. Okay, so let's go ahead. Um, remember the E. coli that we're working with is a special um, version of E. coli, HB101. So it's not pathogenic. Remember, most E. coli that exists in the world is not. Very few strains cause illness, but the ones that do are pretty, pretty disastrous. Okay, so we're going to add 250 microliters of this. I'm going to grab from another kit. And then we're actually going to let it sit for five minutes before we make our plate. Okay, then we'll put the, oh, go ahead, Sorry. put the cap on again, and then we'll let it sit for five minutes. Um, while we're doing that, just kind of aseptic technique, usually you would have an open flame um, out, but we're working with a lot of plastic pieces today, so I think we're okay. You just make sure you wash your hands really well when you start and when you finish, and see how I just kind of put the pipette back in the plastic. Um, but every time you do something in this lab, grab a new pipette and open it. Um, and then we'll go through some of the pieces today. So on last week, Ms. Druger and I, you can see this, this kind of sleeve. These are all Petri dishes. What we did was we poured different types of broth. Now the plates we're working with today are LB plates, which just stands for Luria broth. That's just like a nice beef broth. Um, think of it almost like gelatin. It has the consistency of gelatin. So you can kind of see that in the bottom of this plate here, I actually see there's a few growth plate um, things growing already, which is not necessarily a good sign, so I'm going to put this one to the side. These have been refrigerated. So, you know, bacteria is everywhere, so it's really easy for bacteria to just kind of fall into the plate. This one looks pretty good, um, so we're going to go ahead and use this one. We always invert them because if, they, if condensation forms, that actually promotes bacterial growth. So you can kind of tell this is upside down. We also always write the type of broth on the bottom because sometimes the tops, this is the top, can get separated. Um, but we need to know what's in the bottom of the plate. So again, Luria broth is a nice food for bacteria. They love to grow on it. Um, it's kind of like, I guess, beef broth or something you'd use at home to cook with. Okay, so what we're going to do is when, we get, when this has been sitting for five minutes, we're going to go ahead and we're going to plate. So again, using aseptic technique, trying to minimize um, as much bacteria as possible from being introduced into this area. So I'll set this down. And then this right here is called an inoculating loop. So you can kind of see the end of it. Um, almost looks like a little tiny bubble wand. This, when we do the transformation, you're going to have to pay close attention. It's not ever going to look like you have a ton of any one thing on there, but you just kind of turn it from side to side to make sure there's a film of liquid. Okay, and so that's an inoculating loop. Often, um, when you take a microbiology class in college, this loop will be metal, and you'll have to pass it back and forth through a Bunsen burner flame to sterilize it um, many times during the procedure. But these are plastic, so they're disposable. So any that you finish with, Actually, um, you can tuck them back in the plastic, and we'll be th throwing those in a uh, tub of bleach at the end. Okay, so, Mr. Gurr, do you think this has been there for five yeah, minutes? Yeah, I think that's been there for five minutes. Okay, so I'm going to shake it up a little bit and just kind of, I don't know if you can tell that there's just a liquid in the bottom now and no, maybe a little bit of solid, kind of that powder, so we'll just keep shaking it a little bit more. Okay, so I'll set that back down. Okay, so I'm trying to get my iPad under here to kind of show you what the technique is behind this. 
basically we want to make sure like in step A you're starting to streak across on one quadrant. So think of visually dividing your plate up into fours. And the reason we do this is we want individual colonies of bacteria to grow. We don't want there to be huge, a huge lawn. So picture your grass at home. It covers almost all the dirt. We want there to be little clumps of grass because each colony still has plenty of bacteria. Plus, if it's a distinct colony separated by borders, we know it has come from the same genetic stock, basically. So they should be genetically identical if you pull the same colony. Okay, so A, you can tell we start in one quadrant, then we're going to rotate, go to B, and then C, and then D. Okay. And you can see from our mistake, um, Petri dish, is that there is one single colony, probably from a single bacteria. You can see that little white fleck there. That's a colony of bacteria, and we knew that that was a mistake because we haven't inoculated the plates yet. Okay, so what I'll do here is I'll just open the inoculating loop. So, and I, again, I'm not going to set this back down on the lab bench. Once I open it, I'm going to use it right away. So then I'm going to open my E. coli and I'm going to place it inside and again it's kind of like when you're down to the last bit of bubbles in the bubble solution there's not a lot in there so first you're gonna say Miss Lazinski I didn't get any but I don't know if the video will pick it up really well but there's a film I don't think you can see it on the Let video just tap that and see if I can focus it yeah it's hard to see maybe bring yeah. it down of... that's okay you, you guys know what that looks like when you get bubbles on the end of a bubble wand. Okay, so I'm going to cap this up again. And then I'm going to go ahead and streak my plates. Okay. So again, remember the whole goal of this is I'm going to start with a very small amount of bacteria but I'm also spreading it out. So I'm just kind of moving it across the plate like that. So she's starting in the first quadrant. Okay, then I'll turn it and I'll go like this. So what she's trying to do is spread it out so that eventually by the last quarter turn she's going to have roughly individual colonies that she will have spread it out in such a thin way that in that very last fourth quadrant, which is what she's streaking right now, she's going to get single bacterial colonies. Okay. So I guess the only important thing to remember is, too, with the agar, I'm going to put this on right away because, remember, bacteria is ubiquitous. It's found everywhere. And I'm also, you're not going to see anything on the plate, and you have to be careful that you didn't take your inoculating loop and really gouge because it's like jello. You could really damage the surface um, and then just kind of, you know, you don't need to do it. It's just very kind of a light surface thing. So, and then we're done. Okay, so the next step is going to be to take the plates that Ms. Druger and I made and we're going to put them in the incubator at 37 degrees Celsius for 24 hours. And that's to get the bacteria to start multiplying. Um, they like a nice, warm, kind of a moist place to multiply, so that's why we're doing that. So we'll come back and check because right now I think it's a little on the cold side, but it looks like it's going up. So. I'm actually going to adjust this and make it a little warmer. All right, and then we'll come back and check on it later, but that's what the incubator looks like.